Okay, guys, welcome in to DocuSign Tips, Tricks, and Time Savers. My name is Monica Perry. If I haven't met you yet, I am your Market Center Tech Trainer. If you are in Winston-Salem, Greensboro, Chapel Hill, Durham, and recently added Outer Banks, I'm so excited that you guys are here with me today. Um, the facilitation of forms is a necessary evil in our business, and I know it's none of our favorite thing to do. <laughs> And we still have to do it. So it is my goal that you leave this training today ready to make this process easier, more streamlined and efficient as possible so that you can get your documents out and signed and get your compliance paperwork turned in so you can get those paychecks, right? That's what we're looking for. So please keep this resource guide as a reference for the future. I'm dropping the link in the chat. This is just a link to a Google Sheet. And you are welcome to take that into your own Google Drive and use it as a reference moving forward. If anything new gets added, I do add it onto this Docu DocuSign Tips, Tricks, and Time Savers sheet. I try to teach this class monthly, usually. Um, we did get a new piece of tech inside of DocuSign. So anything new gets added like this right here. It's got links to articles and some fun ways that you can save time. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take off. Please feel free to ask any questions. Um, you can unmute yourself. You can ask in the chat. Whatever works best for you is 100% fine. So before our first transaction, we want to visit rooms.docusign.com to set up our templates and packets. So that is where we're going to start off today. This is probably the biggest saver of time is setting up your template. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to head over and open a new tab and go to rooms.docusign.com. Please keep in mind that is not docusign.com, which is a separate half of DocuSign. So docusign.com is the e-signature side of DocuSign. So if you've used DocuSign in the past, that may be what, what you're familiar with. You don't lose the ability to use DocuSign e-signature. You do, however, gain the ability to use DocuSign rooms, which is what we have connected in command. So again, I know we've had a few people jump on. We are going over how to set up our templates in the new added packets in DocuSign rooms. So now that we've logged in at rooms.docusign.com, we're going to come up to the top and click on my documents. Once this loads up, um, while it's loading up, just to give you guys a heads up about this, just like if we used Dotleaf previously, if you've used um, zip forms and DocuSign e-signature, each year when North Carolina Real Estate Commit or North Carolina Association of Realtors rather um, releases our new forms Jan July 1st, we do need to update our templates because if additional pages got added to the offer to purchase, for example, which is now 16 pages, which is just crazy because I think it was seven when I started in real estate. Um, now we're at 16. You will need to adjust your templates. So at that time of the year, I do go through and make sure all of the new forms are available to you. Um, both in DocuSign in a downloadable version on kwtechcoach.com. And we do need to set up those new templates. So I will be teaching classes in and around that time. I will do several so that everybody can jump in. Okay. So now that we are under the My Documents tab, we're going to talk about setting up templates first, which we have had this ability for quite a while. And then we will take a look at the new packets. So a little different layout if you've set up templates before because packets is now at the top, but you just scroll down a little bit and create a new template with this button over here on the right hand side. Now open this up. We can choose, are we adding from um, DocuSign form libraries, which means our respective market centers the North Carolina Association of Realtors, and our MLS, right? So those are the libraries of forms you can choose from. You can also choose to pick it from DocuSign form packets, previously known as groups. 
There are already form packets set up for you by your market center. And with this new ability in form packets, we can also create our own packets. So we'll look at that here shortly. So you get to select from where you're pulling these forms. So just as an example, I'm going to set up a template for my exclusive buyer agency agreement. So that's form 201, exclusive buyer agency agreement. I'm going to go ahead and click use. We can give our form templates a unique name by clicking the pen in the upper left corner. So if you set up certain exclusive buyer agency agreements in one way for say just a normal customer versus one that maybe you set up for first responders or teachers um, and you maybe give them, you know, something additional for, for their line of work, um, then you can have multiple templates set up of the same form as long as you give it a unique name. So I'm going to come up here. It's going to default just to calling it template one, two, three, four. But if I want to say that this is, you know, for a normal buyer, then I could add that up here as such. And then I just need to click that green check mark right there. So now my rules for templates are, if I do it 50% of the time or more, I am going to put it in this template. So nothing transaction specific, because this is a template that we are going to be able to apply over and over again to the forms that we are getting signed. So I'm not going to put the date in that we're signing or the buyer's names, but I do know that my license is hanging with Keller Williams Realty Elite. I do know that I'm more than likely going to be selling residential property. So I go ahead and check that off. Again, if I do it more than 50% of the time, I do check it off or fill it in. For my general location, I work in some specific counties here in North Carolina. Super size, Davy, David Sun and Stokes. I don't usually go outside of that area. I go ahead and fill that in for myself. I don't know how long the term is going to be. Obviously, I'm going to be doing this over and over again. I do know most of my buyers only purchase one single property with me. I'm going to go ahead and check that off, right? I do not do a non-refundable retainer fee, so I just pop a zero in there for myself. And then I put in whatever my broker in charge and I have agreed to on verbiage for what I expect to receive in the amount of payment when I close for a buyer, okay? So maybe that's 3% of the purchase price, whatever your broker in charge has suggested to you is what you can put in there in that box. So any questions so far on what we've got? making our way through, checking the chat, nothing there. Whatever your expiration days are, go ahead and put those in there for yourself and we're rolling right along. I know I'm going to give them a sample copy of an offer to purchase and pro services because that's what we do. So I'm gonna go ahead and check those off. I don't take anything from home warranties. So nothing there, just an NA. I usually get my people to say that dual agency is okay because most of our offices are number one in our markets. Now I'm just gonna double up on whatever I had on page one for what I expect to get paid in the event that this is dual agency, that's how much the firm would get. So I can go ahead and pop that in there. And on and on we go down to where our information goes. So since I put Keller Williams Realty Elite up on page one, that has gone down here to the firm on page seven. I go ahead and put in my firm license number, phone number, office address. And my license number. So now all of these things that I'm putting in here this one time, I will not have to do this again because I will be able to apply this template each time. 
Okay. So now I'm at the bottom, page seven. I filled in everything that is not transactional specific, and I can apply this template every time. Do we have any questions on how we built the template? Because I know that a lot of people didn't know that we had this ability, um, and they were maybe using templates in zip forms or some other product. We do have that ability here in DocuSign Rooms. All right, I'm going to save and close. So now I have this template available for myself to use over and over. That is how we set up a template. I always get asked, which forms do I set up? So for my business, I set up working with real estate agents, buyer and seller, exclusive buyer agency agreement, the exclusive right to sell listing agreement, my offer to purchase, my professional services disclosure. So those are usually the five that I set up for myself each July 1st when the new forms roll out. So any questions on templates, on the creation at least? Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about these new packets. Again, formerly known as forms groups, only were able to be set up by your market centers, which all of our market centers have done a good job with that. So depending on which market center you're in, you might see a, for, a folder of buyer documents and a folder of listing documents and a folder of commercial documents, just so you don't have to cull through all of the forms that are available in the North Carolina Association of Realtors. And that's great. And perhaps your business is run a little bit differently. Perhaps you need a non-exclusive buyer agency agreement at the ready all the time or whatever that situation may be for you and your business, you now have the ability to set yourself up form packets. So now I can say new packet, and this is going to be Monica's non-exclusive buyer folder. I'm just using it as an example. Okay, and then I can click continue. And now I get the ability to click select and then again choose, am I picking from groups, North Carolina Association of Realtors, all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick NCAR for myself and click use selected. And now I have a list. So maybe I want to have this Q&A on earnest money and I want to have a Q&A on offer and acceptance and I want to have my non exclusive buyer agency agreement, which is right here, then I can save that. I can choose if I want these forms to be required or not within my folder and keep on selecting whatever I need here. So there's my professional services and click save. And that is now created Monica's non-exclusive buyer folder. So now I have a subset of documents from which to choose when I'm creating a transaction. So this can be super useful for some folks. I'm going to show you both ways how to use the automatic form mapping from your office and how to use your own created packets. So pending that we don't have any questions, we're going to move forward. Can I ask a quick question? Please, Ellen. Thank you. Um, uh, so once you uh, set up the template, mm -hmm. does that does that just go under my forms or do you put all of those into, say, via docs? Yeah. So that's a great question. And that's what we're going to look at here. You kind of have two okay. ways now that we have packets that we can go with applying our templates. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do each one. OK. OK. All right. Thank you. Depending Thank you. on which market center you're in, if you're in my. Winston-Salem, Greensboro, Chapel Hill, and Durham offices. We have already set up form mapping for you. If you are in my recently acquired Outer Banks office, I am in the process of setting up form mapping for you. So you're going to see a couple of new things if you're in that Outer Banks office when you're in your DocuSign area. So we're going to take a look at both ways, how you can use your office's pre-established form mapping, and then second, how you can use those new packets and apply your templates, okay? So for that, I like to reference the command path to get paid workflow, okay? I'm going to open this up for you guys. It is linked on your 
document that's in the chat. I can redrop that in the chat if needed. So best practices, command opportunities in DocuSign is just a workflow, right? So number one, we enter our contact into command. We nurture them. They say, yes, I'm ready to purchase a home or yes, I'm ready to sell my home. We go in and create an opportunity for them. And then if you want to use your offices pre-mapping, you can pick a checklist type. If you are going to use your own packets, then you do not need to pick your checklist type at first, at least you will eventually have to pick it. So that's what we're about to take a look at. So now that I've already got my contact in command, I'm gonna come into my opportunities handshake and I'm going to click create opportunity in the upper right corner. And what type of opportunity is it? A buyer. My client's already in command. So I'm gonna choose them here. And I'm gonna name this DocuSign 3T on 314. Goodness gracious, it's already the middle of March. You can give it custom tags, all the fun things that you can do right here. And then I'm going to click create. So now that I have my opportunity made, which was step two of my workflow, the more details that I put on this page, the more data that is going to flow over to DocuSign, okay? So if I come in and I hit my edit pencil and I say, well, I know that we are going to um, write a contract today on 314 and I know that we are aiming to close April 28th. And I know that my client's going to spend $350,000. And I know that my commission is going to be 3%. And my client is going to take conventional loan. Then the more that I put in here, the more that has the ability to flow into DocuSign. Okay. So same thing with the property. If I go ahead and say, okay, this person is going to make an offer on 600 quarter staff road in Winston-Salem, then Google just helped me populate that address and I can save that here. That too is going to flow into DocuSign. So this is kind of another piece of a time saver is the more details that you have, the more that's going to flow over. So now that my details are complete and I choose documents, I'm going to show you first using your office's mapping. So if I now come for following along on our path to get paid. I've entered my contact, created my opportunity, gone to my documents tab, and now I'm going to pick a checklist type from the left. So that's residential. Like I said, Outer Banks, if you're in the room, you are going to see these come up. You're going to have several options under buyer and listing. Um, you can use them if you want, or you can continue to use the way that you've been using completely up to you, but the options will be there. So I'm going to choose residential. Anything that has this teal DS next to it is going to auto populate into my DocuSign room for me. So in this case, my working with real estate agents, exclusive buyer agency agreement, the questions and answers on working with real estate agents brochure, the sample of the offer to purchase and contract that I told my client I was going to provide, the sample of the professional services disclosure, and a questions and answers on home inspections brochure. All of those are going to auto populate into my DocuSign room, along with the offer to purchase and contract, my specific office's affiliated business disclosure and agent disclosure for the broker in charge and a 4T and a due diligence. So anything with the TLDS, okay? So now watch the magic happen. I click start a transaction. I choose DocuSign. We are going to have DocuSign pop up for us. If you do not see DocuSign pop up, you have a pop-up blocker enabled on your device. You will need to disable the pop-up blocker and then DocuSign will open up for you. So if you don't see DocuSign open up, just look up here in your URL bar. There may be like a little exclamation point that is showing you you have a pop-up blocker enabled. But there we go. All of those forms that had the TLDS next to them are now here in my room so that I can take action. I have my templates. So to Ellen's question, 
I can now right click my exclusive buyer agency agreement and click apply form template. So you guys can see how it looks. I'm gonna open up what the exclusive buyer agency looks like without a template. And that's going to be completely blank. It will have pulled over some data from command, right? So my client's name is in here. My company name came over from command. So a couple of things will come in, not a ton, right? However, if I right click and apply my form template that I just made, which is this one right here and click apply, then everything that I filled in on my form template is now going to be in my buyer agency agreement so that I don't have to type it, which I very much appreciate because I'm busy. So now I've got my client's name. I do need to pop my date in here that we are getting this signed, but there you go. Residential for Scythe, Davy Davidson, Stokes Counties for buyers purchasing a single property. There's my zero. There's the commission I expect to get paid. There's my days after that I expect a protection period. There's my check boxes, NA in home warranty. Dual agency, they do authorize me. There's my dual agency compensation all filled in. And here is all of my information filled in, making my need to type things super limited. I only need to type in the transactionally specific things like what is today's date, right? Um, what is the expiration? What are the additional provisions? Because everything else is pretty much filled in for me, right? You do have the ability at this point, if for some reason you needed to change something that was on your template, you can change that and then just hit save and close and it will make that change for you. So that is how we apply our templates. That is how we use the auto mapping functionality set up for us by our market centers, okay? So that's way one. That's using this path to get paid, creating the opportunity, picking the checklist type, and having all of those documents auto-populate into DocuSign for us. So any questions on that one? We're good? Awesome. So let's look at using the new packets. Same thing, create opportunity, pick your type. This time I'll use listing, client. We're gonna pick our client. We've already added them to command. We're gonna do all the same things that we did before. I'm not gonna to get too detailed with this because you guys know how to create an opportunity. So I've got all my stuff filled in. Again, I could go ahead and fill in some of my details, but I'm just gonna come over to my documents. This time I am not going to pick a checklist type first because I want to use my own packets. So I'm going to click start a transaction in DocuSign. And once this opens up, there will not be any forms auto magically popping up into my room it's blank because I now want to add forms from DocuSign forms and I want to pick my packet, Monica's listing documents, my own packet that I established. And then if I say, okay, I want to use this exclusive right to sell from here, I can apply my form template, right? And then I can say, I need this and this and this and that, and then I can click add selected. And now my exclusive right to sell had a template applied to it already. I'm gonna open that up and you will see everything that has already been filled in for me by my template and command, okay? So all of this, the NAs, the seller does not agree to obtain a home warranty. I've already checked off cash conventional because I don't know before I list if a property can go FHA, VA, or USDA. Um, I expect to get 6% for the firm, 60 days. All of my stuff is filled in. My check boxes are checked. 
really limiting the amount of typing that I need to do to get this document ready to send off. So only things specific to this property and these sellers are the things that I need to fill in because the rest of it's already filled out for me. So like I said, definitely the biggest time saver is using your static form templates. So I hope you guys like that. I know a lot of folks did not know that you could do that. So any questions on that? Nothing in the chat. I'm going to drop these in this document one more time for anybody that joined late. So you'll have that. Awesome. Okay. So we will move on to what's next. So always starting in command first, super important. If you don't start in command, you can't use the automatic mapping. If you don't start in command, you cannot connect your DocuSign room to your opportunity. So once your documents are signed, you would have to download them from DocuSign and upload them to command as opposed to just choosing what goes in the specific checklist um, row. So any questions on that? Always starting first in command. Good. We talked about picking our checklist type. We talked about applying our previously created form templates. And now pre-tagged roles is the next time saver. Okay. We used to have to choose pre-tagged roles. DocuSign has made that a little more automated for us. So I'm just going to use this listing as an example. Okay. If I choose my exclusive right to sell listing agreement and my residential property disclosure, mineral oil and gas rights as the things that I need to get signed. And then I click my pen to create my envelope. This is pre-tagging the people. So who do I have in this transaction that needs to take action on these documents? I do as a listing agent because there's a listing agreement in here. So I need to sign it. And in this example, I only have one seller. So seller one is the only person who needs to sign, right? So now I can click continue. And what this is going to do is drop everyone's signatures, initials, dates, text fields, anything that is specific to them, including on the listing, which is why I use this as an example, the check boxes for the property disclosure in the mineral oil and gas rights. Those are going to be assigned to seller one, okay? So now set signing order. This is a newer feature and a lot of people were not aware of it and it can cause some confusion. When this box is checked, this means that me, the listing agent is in position one. I will need to send this, take my action first before my seller will receive their email to sign, okay? Or if I want us to both get it simultaneously, I can uncheck set signing order. So then when I hit send, I can take my action if I'm ready to at the time, my seller will simultaneously get their document in their email saying that they need to sign. So any questions on signing order? Because a lot of times people will have it checked, they'll send it off and then they tell their clients that they sent it and then they call me and they're like, I sent my DocuSign stuff, but then I went to show property and my client didn't get it. And it was because they didn't take their action first. So it didn't send it on to the client. Questions? Okay, great. So now I'm going to move forward to next so you guys can see how this worked. Okay, so my text was filled in. We're going to pretend for the sake of time that I filled everything in as it should have been filled in. But you can see now that the individual agent initials are here and the seller initials are here. And over here in my preview pane, I can see everyone that needs to sign yellow me, blue seller. Gray is just the text boxes. 
another new feature that we did not used to have. If you forgot to put the lot and block and you were like, shoot, I forgot to put the lot and block on here. You can now type those in at this point. We did not used to be able to do that, but now we can, okay? So that's what the gray little tab is for. But everybody's initials and signatures are where they go all the way down the form. A couple of places to take notice, right? This is a solid initial where the seller acknowledges that they've been made aware of each firm's duty as described above in this paragraph. Public marketing is not solid and that is because it is optional. If you want to make something optional, be required so that you ensure yourself that your seller and or buyers are going to take action on that specific initial box. You're going to click, come to the right and make it required. And I'm going to show you why that's so important. Okay. So let's just pretend this was office exclusive. Okay. I can come up to the top and I can click preview and I can see how these documents will look from the perspective of myself and anyone else who is going to be signing. So if I drop this down and choose seller one, so I can see it from his perspective, I can actually interact with the documents so that I know what seller one is going to see, okay? So he's gonna see his name, my company name, he's going to click start, and this is required, and this is required, and this is required, and this is required, and there's that box that we saw was already required. I made public marketing required, but I did not make the second initial required. And watch what happens. It's going to skip them right over the top. So one of three things is going to happen here. If you have a high D personality like me, I'm not even going to know that that initial box existed, in all honesty, because I'm just going to click until I'm done clicking. So I won't even see it. Option two, they are going to see it and they're not going to know which one is right. So they're either not going to initial it or they're going to initial incorrectly, right? So instead of doing that to myself and my clients, what I usually do when I see those um, optional initials is I say, okay, I've already discussed with my client this. Yes, I've already discussed that we're going to do public marketing. Yes. I'm not doing office exclusive. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this and just delete it. That way there's not a question, no action needed here, right? So I'm just gonna delete that. As I continue to slide down, there's another spot on the exclusive right to sell listing agreement, the exclusive right to represent buyer, um, even I think vacant land and all that kind of stuff too. There's some options like this, but when I get down here to dual agency, DocuSign doesn't know if your seller said that dual agency was okay or not. So those initials are optional, okay? So I usually have already had this conversation. If my seller said dual agency was fine, I'm gonna click the box and make it required. I'm going to say, no, they don't need designated agency, delete. And no, we are not doing exclusive representation, delete, right? So then there's no question about what is actually going to get signed. Anybody have any questions on that? So we've covered quite a bit. We talked about pre-tagged roles. So choosing who's going to sign, choosing if they're going to be signing in sequential order or receiving simultaneously. We have talked about taking action on unrequired initials. Okay, and then again, the reason that I showed you this form or the seller side is because of this right here, the property disclosure and mineral oil and gas rights. As a person who used to take the time each year to drag and drop individual text boxes on every single one of these check boxes so that my clients could fill this out electronically, I can tell you how thankful I am <laughs> that I don't have to do that any longer, okay? This has now filled this in for me, but take caution. 
no, DocuSign doesn't know the, uh, the answers to these questions. They don't know what year the billing, building was constructed. They don't know if your seller is even going to answer that question or not. So none of these text boxes, none of these check boxes are required for your seller to click. So you need to make your seller aware that, yes, this is required. It's going to take them all the way to the bottom of this page. And you need them to stop and take a moment to answer the questions to the best of their ability. Now, I know some of my folks handle vacation rentals and that your sellers ask you to check no representation all the way down. I, I get it. And we can talk about that offline. But they're, I mean, best practice, just get a sign in paper and let your seller draw a line through no rep. But for when the seller is actually going to be answering these questions, this is the correct way. Again, I'm going to go into preview. I'm going to interact with seller one so that you guys can see what it's going to look like for them when they get down to the disclosure part. So they're going to click start, sign, 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 sign the things that we made required, right? There's that dual agency, less confusion. And now I'm coming from my listing agreement into signing my seller disclosure. It took me all the way to the bottom of the first page because that's the first place that I'm required to take action as the seller. I'm going to sign it. It's now taken me to the bottom of page two to sign. However, it did not tell me to answer these. So it is my job as the real estate agent to tell my seller, hey, when you get this, it's going to take you down to the bottom of page two. However, I need you to take action on page two by answering the questions, checking no representation, whichever thing it is that is right for your business, right? And they can just go through. Everything is open for them to fill out right? They can say, no, there's not problems that we have brick and wood, whatever that they need to fill out. Okay. Another note on this, this is seller one. Okay. So if you have two sellers or more and seller, I mean, just by default, I think a lot of people do husband first and then wife. If the wife <laughs> is the one that's going to be answering these questions, then she needs to be in the position of seller one. So whoever is in the seller one position is the one that's going to be able to answer all of these questions, fill in all of the text boxes and all of the check boxes. Seller two will not have that ability. They will only have the ability to sign. So questions on that piece. Good. Tell me in the chat, who knew that you could um, do this? Who knew that you could use pre-tag roles and have your sellers answer these questions? Yes or no? I did know, I didn't know. Okay. Well, hopefully this is going to be a time saver for you guys so you don't have to physically take over your disclosures to your sellers. So pre-tag rolls, super important, saves you a ton of time, okay? Now, another thing, clients that share an email address, I hear about it all the time. <laughs> My clients just have one email address for Mrs. And Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that is fine. Command only allows one person to have the email address in the whole system. So give client one, Mr. and Mrs. Smith at gmail.com as their email and leave client number two with no email. Okay. So then in DocuSign, you can, in fact, add them both. So if I take this working with real estate agents and I go to get this signed, and I say buyer one and two need to sign, right? It knows buyer one's email address already. 
But if buyer two is going to be using the same email address as buyer one, then when I get to this point, I can just say, okay. Also, Sasha needs to sign. And she also uses this email as her email. So they can both sign from that email. Now, if this is the case, if they're sharing an email, they must be in sequential order because what will happen is an email will come to that Gmail account and Dakota will sign. And once Dakota completes his signatures, a second email is going to come to the same email address for Sasha to sign. Make sense? So you have to remember to put that, to click that set signing order. It it defaults, Ellen. It, it defaults, defaults to, to set signing order. What you really have to remember is to uncheck it. <laughs> if you, okay. If you don't okay. want it to do that. Yeah. So it'll default there for you. Mm. Great questions. All right. So cool deal. So the answer is yes. They can, in fact, share an email and get signatures. Awesome. Okay. Next up uh, for my teams or people that have administrative assistance or people that are in partnerships that want to share access to their DocuSign rooms with other agents and or administrative assistants that are inside of the Keller Williams family. This cannot be done for virtual assistants that are not part of Keller Williams. OK, but for anyone who is a part of Keller Williams and has a Keller Williams DocuSign account, you can share form access. So let's take a look at that. So let's say I'm just going to discard this that I want to share access to all of my forms with my co-rainmaker, Candy Dillard, okay? Then when I'm in any of my DocuSign rooms, it won't matter which one it is, I can come to the People tab, okay? I can then invite Candy Dillard at kw.com. It doesn't have to be a KW email address. They just have to have a DocuSign account that is a KW DocuSign account. I can then make her an agent owner and click invite. Okay. So now that I have added Candy, I can click the three dots on her contact and I can click the share form access button. I can share the form access for only this room. So think my office has a transaction coordinator that does per transaction help, but they have a Keller Williams DocuSign account, then I could add them just to this room because this is the room that they are helping me get signatures for. Or if it is a partnership, an administrative assistant that is actually your administrative assistant and you want them to have access to any and all of your rooms, then you can choose any room and click save. At that point, they will be able to access your rooms. What they will not be able to access is your form templates. So those static form templates that we set up, if Candy was going to put together my exclusive buyer agency agreement for me from her account, she could not apply my form template. Okay, so your admin could set up your own form templates in her account or his account. Um, to use, but they cannot access yours. Form templates are not shareable. So any questions on that? Form access and sharing. And all of these guys, I've linked articles. So if you're like, I, I don't remember what Monica said about sharing form access. If you click into this document on that, it will actually open up a help article that shows you exactly how to do it, what it means, how to undo it, <laughs> if you want to undo it, the article will be right here for you, okay? Awesome. Okay, another 
thing that a lot of people don't know that you can do is that you can email yourself documents to DocuSign. So think, I have a listing. I'm out showing property this afternoon until five. And I get an offer in my email. And I told my sellers, hey, we got an offer. I'm going to be back at my desk at five. And I'm going to send that over for your signatures. Then you don't, you just want to make sure that you have the forms in there. Okay. So what you can do is in DocuSign. Okay. I'm going to go back to my dashboard here. I just clicked on dashboard, which brought me back to my DocuSign rooms dashboard. I have an inbox. When I click on this inbox, if I've never established it, I have a button here that lets me establish my DocuSign email. Mine is just Monica Perry at mail.docusign.net. Okay. And I can take any document. Bear with me one sec while I pull up an attachment in an email. Okay. So if I take this email that has a PDF attached to it, like my offer, I can then forward that email to my, oops, clicked off, to my DocuSign there we go, account. So I can just open up this email and I can click forward and I can click Monica Perry at mail.docusign.net. The attachment is still there and I can send it off. So then when I come back to my desk at five to get this document signed by my seller, just refresh here, it will be sitting in my inbox. It might take it a second to hit. And it'll already be in my DocuSign account. So I won't have to go into my email and download it and upload it and all that kind of stuff because I've already emailed it to myself in DocuSign. I could have done that right from my cell phone or my assistant could have done it for me. Whatever the situation is, there's that offer that I received. So I can now click this box and just say, I need to move this to my active room, Dakota Perry listing and click move. And now that document will be in that room for me to send where I've already got my sellers added. I didn't have to download. I didn't have to upload. I just moved it over to that room. Okay, and then I can send it off for signatures. So that goes even deeper with emailing yourself, right? So I just forwarded the email that was attached, okay? You could also forward an email. So say you wanted to save your correspondence with somebody. Your seller said, hey, lower the price $5,000 in an email. And you want to go ahead and get that price lowered, but you haven't had a chance to get your price adjustment signed yet, but your broker in charge said you could do it as long as you have documentation of it, right? And you want to save that email. Then I could forward an email from my email address and put ha hashtag or pound, <laughs> whichever one you prefer to say, because everybody says one differently, um, but you can take whichever one and you can forward the text of your email. Hold on, let me find a good email with some text in it. I'm just gonna take this one. I can now forward this to my DocuSign email. I could hit the right buttons there and I can put Hashtag PDF in my subject line, and that will turn the contents of the email into a PDF. And I can then put it in the room so that I can save my correspondence. So putting hashtag PDF into the subject line will change the 
email content to a PDF. You could even go even deeper and you can put the identifying room number. Every room has an identifier. Show you up here at the top. It's right here under ID. If that is also in the subject line of the email, it will put it directly in the room and bypass the DocuSign inbox. So interesting that you can do that. Might be a time saver for someone. We can also split PDFs. Um, I always I always see it. Somebody sends me, um, or I go into MLS and download the disclosures, and it's all one file. Right. <laughs> We've all seen that happen. Um, when that happens, you can upload the documents because we know in command that we want each document separate. We want our property disclosure, our mineral, mineral oil and gas rights, and our lead-based paint as a separate document. So I'm just going to take protect your home family from lead and show you an example. So I can actually click this open. And this little document actions button up at the top is my friend. I can print, I can do all kinds of stuff from here, including splitting. So I can now split this document up. A 19 page combined document. I could say that pages um, one through four are the residential property disclosure. That's page one through four. I can add and say the mineral oil and gas rights is page five. And I can add and say the lead-based paint is pages six through seven, right? And then I can click save. And so now that has created separated documents for me. So here's my residential property disclosure, pages one through four. Mineral and oil and gas rights is now a one page document, which had been page five. And my lead based paint is page six and seven is now its own document that's just two pages long. So we can split documents, right? So pretty cool there, makes it easier when we're importing into command. All right, so we have gone through a bunch of tricks and time savers and things that you can do to make your life better. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. I want to open it up for any questions, but you guys have been awfully quiet. <laughs> so I don't know if we'll get any, um, but I really want this to be as painless as possible for you guys. I know that documents aren't the most fun thing in the world, so I appreciate you guys coming to class, but they are important um, and an important part of our business. So does anybody have any questions? on the things that we showed today. Was this helpful? Did you learn something new? This was exceedingly helpful to me and I can see how it could save a ton of time. And thank you so much for the way you set it up that, that we can just save it and go in and, and redo it at our leisure and, yeah. or when we need it. So I appreciate your time. Absolutely. And this video was recorded. So I do, I try to do this, like I said, each month. Um, I have some people that come multiple times <laughs> so that they can remind themselves how to do stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what I'm here for. Um, I will put this video on YouTube and I will also feature it on the homepage of kwtechcoach.com. If you guys have not bookmarked my website yet, please take a moment to do so today. I work really hard to keep this updated for you guys. It's got a button to schedule a 30 minute or 15 minute consultation with me on Zoom. It's got tech tips of all types. It's got everything from Family Reunion 2023. Boot camp is coming up. It tells you when. It's got my classes listed right here and then tons of resources for you up here at the top that you can access, okay? So I try to keep this as updated as possible and I will feature this video where last month's DocuSign Tricks and Time Savers was because now we got packets and we didn't have those last month.
So I'll have this featured video right here on the home screen of kwtechcoach.com. And when do you think you're going to have the Out of Banks uh, Market Center up and running with um, those yeah, packets? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording.